This is an emergency broadcast of the Uncovering Anomalies podcast. This is not a drill. Remove any children and pets from your home and go to your nearest shelter. Remember to at all times listen to the Uncovering Anomalies podcast. And whatever you do, do not under any circumstances, trust what you see. We're live. Ooh. All right. <laughs> so, yeah, you told me you're, so, so you're shaving your goatee today. Yeah, I know my name at the bottom says tip top goatee. Tip top goatee gopher. <laughs> Hold on. Let me try that one more. <laughs> tip top goatee topher. I just like all the T's in there. Um, right, right. And then... yeah, but I, I'm thinking of shaving the bottom part, keeping the okay. mustache and the sideburns. Uh, so the bottom part, you mean the chin? Uh, what about under the lip, the bottom lip? Will it keep that, or is that gone too? No, that's gonna go too. That's gone too. Okay, <laughs> get it? Go <laughs> to, go to. <laughs> yes, you know, and this is it might surprise a lot, maybe it might not surprise a lot of people, but um, I really did not know what a or exactly know. I thought I knew. I thought I knew what a uh, um um. God, what is it called now? I can't remember what that's called. <laughs> pun. I, I, I really, I understood what a real pun was like only a few years ago. Like I thought, <laughs> I understood. I, I thought I understood a pun, and I'd say like I'd say stuff, and I'd be like, no pun intended. No, and then yeah. my, my wife like, uh, that's not a pun. <laughs> um, Such an idiot. I, I, uh, there's not a huge difference between a goatee and a Van Dyke, and I kind, I'm thinking about. <laughs> keeping like the little bit of hair on the bottom of my chin so i can do a do a van dyke the only just that right no it's it's the chin hair and the mustache okay i just my hair doesn't grow thick enough on my face oh yes we did we talked about that last week that's right it doesn't connect right so same here mine doesn't connect either Oh um, man, no, no Fu Manchus in this family. No Fu Manchus. No, I mean, if I, I guess if I grew it long enough, I could have an illusion that it's connecting. But there's no hair there. I mean, there's no like, you know. Yeah, I actually I found out the way to grow full facial hair is to not shave for like eight months, uh, and, and then you've got a full oh. thick mane of hair down there. Interesting. Yeah, because I have a lot of spots missing. Like if I grow a beard now, it's it's just it's spotty. I guess. Yeah. Um, didn't Keanu Reeve have that issue too, where it wasn't a full beard, and now of course he, that's all he has is his beard. But yeah. Well, I, have I, you seen him with now, that, like him in his current age? Now that he's like when he shaves, he looks yeah. he looks old as shit. Does that's he what, really? Yeah. That's he. Uh, the newest. Uh, what the hell is that movie where? um john wick no well yeah he, and john wick he's got the full beard but the he's one, got the full beard yeah uh, crap what's he's the one new movie he, he goes back in time with his friend oh bill and ted's excellent bill, adventure. no no no. so oh. they did it they did a new bill and ted oh and i knew i never he watched was, that I was he was fully to. shaven for that oh. and he just he looks old and that's why he's got the beard now all right. So what he's his skin is not like young looking. You mean right? No, no, no. He hides it under a beard. Interesting. So he's not like the typical. I mean, he, we know he's not a typical Hollywood dude. Um, they would have plastic surgery or do something to fix it, you know. But mm-hmm. he's he's very different. He's not about that lifestyle. He right. Apparently, he lives in hotels. He's always on his bike. He doesn't have he doesn't own property basically. Like you know, what I mean, like in the traditional sense. Is that right, or is that yeah, like just like no, a myth I, about him? I, no, I think that's correct. You know, he's a yeah, a non-traditional Hollywood guy. Yeah, and like I people see. I, I think that's the, I think that's the big reason for his popularity. Yeah, yeah. I mean, again, people would say they'd see him like just in public places. Was that? I mean, maybe that's just a myth too, like helping people or something. You know how that how people yeah, just yeah, do yeah. that. I mean, I I've seen uh, videos and pictures of him like helping the the movie staff carry stuff up hills, you know, and things like that. You yeah, I, I I think he's just a he's just a good dude. Anyway, he is a uh, good let's dude. let's talk about aliens and UFOs. And oh stuff. yes, our favorite subject. Yeah. So I anyway, this is the uncovering anomalies podcast. You got uh, it now. Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> that's I want to believe Adam, even though yes. Changed his name on the on the screen here, and I'm tip top goatee, oh. no longer goatee 
about to be no longer goatee Topher. And <laughs> yes, uh, we want to talk about, I know we love talking about movies and TV shows and all that stuff, but really what we're here to talk about is aliens and UFOs. Yes. yes. And, and conspiracies and things yes. like that. And high strangeness, and right? Very high strangeness. And, yes. and what's the other word? What's the other word we use? Or uh, that's used also deep politics. Yeah, real <laughs> deep, real deep politics. Real and deep politics. It, it I know is, they like to go deep. It is the season for real deep politics. Uh, the the Trump and um, wh- who's our current president? Biden. Biden. That's right. Yeah. Our, our Trump and Biden stuff is ramping up at this point, so we'll probably. Eh, who knows we might bring them up we might not honestly yeah. it just it just makes us both mad so maybe we won't talk about it we'll no, see it does, yeah i think i think there's like a couple of things here and there um yeah. not not too much about that there was a lot going on with with ufos and it was a lot actually like how, how is yeah this, every week like there's a lot going on not, not, not just one thing but like two three major things you know um, yeah, yeah. I mean, the the biggest story that came out this week was the uh, Mexico. Was it Mexico? Yeah, Mexico. They, NASA they brought also out, did their thing, but yeah, they brought out aliens. Mm-hmm. Well, alien. Um, I mean, yeah, al- I mean, in alien cases, bodies. Supposedly, alien bodies. Yeah, supposedly. Um, and it's really funny because the conversation was, was like, "All right, so debunkers, you guys are like, all right, we want to see the evidence, we want to see crafts, we want to see aliens, and then." The Mexicans bring out the aliens or alien bodies, and then everyone's like, "Well, uh, that's fake." <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Well, that's yeah. I mean, that's that's the problem with the UFO community. I mean, um, it's always pushing the goalposts. You, you can't believe, yeah, exactly. Always pushing the goalposts. You yeah. can't believe anything that you see, and so it's it's tough. I mean, I think, we're that way too. I, I'm too. I don't. I don't think. I, I, I mean, I, I'm still on the fence on them. I keep going back and forth. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, we can go through some of the stuff, but my first thing is like, oh, here we go again. The Mexicans are doing, you know. Bring mm-hmm. out this fake stuff because I know that ufologist. He's been around forever. Uh, Hamey or uh, oh my god! And so I think w- one of the biggest things is he's been proven to be a fraud. Yeah, that's the thing. Now, not everything he's brought forward has been fake, but he's brought over some brought forward some really fake stuff, uh, like yeah. obviously fake. Um, but he was under oath. Like I guess that doesn't mean anything for liars. But I'm not going. He's not a liar. Maybe he's naive. Maybe he just wants to believe everything. That kind of thing, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, without really putting the work into it, and also he's, people have issues that Gaia paid for the DNA. He's CIA. Um, oh Pinchard yeah, or, 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 or Federales. <laughs> <laughs> is that their CIA or something? Is that I their, have no idea. I don't even know what to believe at this point. But let's let's right, get so, it. Yeah, let's get into I, it. I have a question though. So last week we did nine eleven, right? And he said you want to do nine eleven too. So so I just I don't want. Actually, I don't feel like doing this. But should I just leave a link that is a mega as uh, a mega playlist that we can leave for people to just uh, just go through yeah, instead I of th- us going through it? Because I don't I don't think. Um, yeah, I don't I don't I don't feel like doing 9-11 again. Um, yeah, 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 just leave a leave a playlist and yeah, go yeah. from there. Everything again, as I say every week, everything we talk about is in the show notes. It is. It's in the show notes um, and not on YouTube, though, just in case you're watching us there uh they want us to uh yeah, basically go to, give give ids and stuff like that like, i'm not we're not going to do that you know um, yeah go to go to spotify go to apple yeah. um yeah. podcasts right. you can find everything that we talk about linked up there you know what i could do is uh leave a link tree um like uh we can leave oh no that'll be no we can't do that never mind all right so let's 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 go on so this also was big that happened um a, a big YouTube, a big YouTuber. Uh, his name is Jesse. I guess Michelle's or Michael's or or Michael's. I believe it's Michael's. Michael's. Okay, so he got to interview and his friends. They got to interview Grush, like not really just off the cuff, but they they hiked with the guy. They invited him over. I guess it's for a weekend. Um, you know, and, and you know, before we play some things here, I I wanted to understand like why did this guy get it right. So here's his LinkedIn. Only three connections. He obviously doesn't give a crap about it. You're um, looking at his, we're looking at his LinkedIn page right now. Yeah, we're looking at his, yeah we're we're on his LinkedIn page. Investor at TC TC is Teal Capital. He lives in LA. We know that. He's got three connections, right? But he's an investor. That's his thing. He is an investor. He's pretty young. So you know, obviously, smart dude. If he's investing money at this age and 
and doing and doing that well for himself. Um, but you know, people that don't know who Teal is, <laughs> this is Peter Teal, uh, very closely tied to the CIA, or at least his projects are. He calls himself a libertarian, but you know, he funds projects like uh um Remember that it was a picture of like the Saudi king, Trump, and someone else. They were holding like this globe. Uh, do you remember that picture? No, I don't. Uh, honestly, but it, but it was it was a Peter Thiel technology project, which is like uh, uh, which is like um, Minority Report. So it was pre-crime, and they'd use social media and other signals to go after terrorists. You know, it's basically spying. So it's crazy. He calls himself a libertarian, but anyway, lots lots of his money comes from CIA projects and and the government. Um, so there's that angle of it. But then also from this um, blog post, um, Eric Weinstein Weinstein is his, he's the managing director of Teal Capital. Now, Eric, he's a physicist, known physicist, which is strange, first of all, that he runs a financial uh, company. But he's can been you, on, yeah. Can you read the title of the article? Uh, Peter Teal's UFO Interests. Plus, Gary Nolan wants your money to test UFO parts. This is in awesome. 2022. Um, so here it goes. Uh, while the uh, uh, political recently reported that Teal has been discussing UFOs at fundraising dinners for Senate candidates, while the managing director of Teal Capital, Eric Weinstein, has publicly reversed his position on UFOs and has now embraced all manner of bizarre ideas about flying saucers. Now, Eric, he's like I said, he's a he's a physicist, scientist. You know, he's managing director of a of an investment investment capital fund. You know, which is strange by itself. Uh, but he went on the Joe Rogan show and he started talking about you know what's happening with UFOs and you know I, it kind of sounds like he's still on the fence because he can't believe that the physics, the new physics, can be hidden. In these contractors, uh, anyway, but it's a whole mishmash um, of people, and then, but you know, it's still a great interview with Grush um, because he brings in lots of historical things about UFOs in there, like cool stuff. You can tell the guy really uh, loves the subject, has has really researched the subject. So even though there's CIA ties, it goes back that there's a fight going on, right, Topher? I mean, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. even though it's CIA tied. Um, I guess if everything's run by them, then I guess we should be grateful that there's a part of them that want to bring this out. Um, yeah, but should I play like I don't know five ten yeah. seconds? Yeah, See. just just play play a few seconds. And it, you know what's really cool? YouTube now shows you most replayed. So actually, we could probably do that. But here's like the beginning of it. They have let in fifteen people from the public. There you gotta people. turn it up former intelligence official he has knowledge of a covert government program to recover crashed alien spacecraft you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give is the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth so help you god that is david grush a former afghanistan combat veteran and 14-year high-ranking intelligence officer hey, nice hey, light, man. in 2019 he was tasked by the pentagon to investigate ufos as part of the unidentified anomalous phenomena task force i had no interest in you know ufos or whatever but i thought it'd be kind of an interesting thing <laughs> going on during his investigation grush started to uncover a program that was being systematically hidden from him the american public and our elected representatives we're done with the cover-up and we're going to get to the bottom of it that gummit a program yeah. whose man gummit find and <laughs> retrieve crashed ufos and attempt to rebuild them into functional vehicles that humans can fly and i'm sitting there and I'm like okay well this is a thing thanks to new ufo whistleblower <laughs> this is a thing. All right, so let's go. Let's try some most replayed clips. Okay. Uh, he does. He does say some crazy stuff in in these in, in this interview, and it's cool. It looks like they flew him out. You know, uh, to just hang out with him in L.A. That's the way to do it. There's one simple vision oh, hack on, anyone can ad. use to improve vision, <laughs> so you can say goodbye to your optometrist for good. This is YouTube Press. after all, and certainly with this. Yeah, I mean, he's an investor. So it's all about money, isn't it? Thanks, Jesse. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's try this. Subject. Yeah. When you're trying to uh, crack an unknown unknown, Mm -hmm. um, that kind of obtuse security doesn't help either. When you say unknown unknown, you know, is it the USB drive to a caveman analogy where it's like the caveman doesn't know information theory, doesn't have a computer to plug the USB drive into, and we just 
I don't even know where to start in terms of reverse engineering things. Well, yeah, it's, things, yeah or... it's like it's like other people have given analogies, like giving Galileo a TID. TI 83 plus graph and calculator. They open yeah. it up and they see circuitry and they're like, well, what is even this? I don't even, have a concept of a transistor. But you know? even that, yeah. or like yeah. a monkey with an iPhone, you kind of know how to, yeah, if you open it up, sure, you're, you're confused, but you can. Monkey with an iPhone, that's perfect, isn't it? Because yeah, that's how really, to use it. That's a really good metaphor, honestly. Yeah, 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 exactly. Kind of know how to press the buttons and you realize there's this graphical interface or whatever. Mm -hmm. That seems easier than caveman with a USB drive. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, where are we in that? Yeah, I mean, some of it is it's hard to gauge how far in advance it is because you're just assuming a certain linear progression. You know, I think some of this is they made an asymptotal leap that, you know, put them over the edge mm. to a different kind of plane of. That's pretty fascinating. Yeah, like a different know. timeline almost. If I was a betting man, some of this NHI, they're similarly as advanced as us but they've just made they've uh, what is it asymmetric evolution or whatever they they want a different path where we made nuclear weapons and stuff they yeah. ended up making this like civil propulsion kind of equivalent um yeah discovery where they're able to do this now but they're actually not that much more advanced than you and i interesting huh i mean coming coming from grush uh, yeah, that, that actually is super interesting, and it yeah. goes along with uh, my interdimensional yeah. theory that's totally correct and not speculation whatsoever. <laughs> but no, but it makes sense, and 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 you know maybe maybe it took intelligence that long also to advance in the universe. We're not actually that um, far off anything that's as intelligent as us. Does that make sense? I I don't know if I put that right. Um, yeah, no, I, I get what you're saying. <clears throat> get what you're saying. Um, there is one UFO researcher, and I, I, I'm for the life of me, I can't remember his name. I'm terrible. Well, at names. Eh? But his theory is that um, they're technologically advanced, but kind of not dumb. They just they're they're about as socially as um, advanced as we are. But yeah. And in some ways, we're more advanced. And I think that's where the nuke thing comes in, is that maybe we are more violent or our minds can just destroy things much better than them. Well, and it, and um, it fits, uh, fits along with the whole why they abduct us to like, t you know, and they mm -hmm, impregnate mm -hmm. our women mm -hmm. and they ask the parents to, hey, help raise this child because they're not socially. Um, I mean, they're they're technologically technologically advanced, but not socially advanced, and not emotionally advanced. Yeah, and we, not we emotionally have, advanced. Yeah. yeah, let's see this one. This is also most replayed. Oh, about his PT. So they tried to smear him. Remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. His PTSD from combat experience and having a close friend die while on duty. I had a friend of mine died doing the same stuff I was, you know, six months later, going to the same locations. He's also discussed all of the suffering that's resulted from that experience and the proactive techniques he's used to heal from that trauma. So like EMDR therapy, uh, breath, HRV breath work, all that stuff, I was not a believer, but holy crap, at least it worked for me. And I highly recommend anybody that has issues with that, maybe try some of that stuff, because it seems kind of, non-traditional but i he just seems like a cool guy man i can't believe they tried to smear him like that you know but so many people support him i really recommend this this documentary this show it goes through a lot you know which we can't really cover here um and listen to the interview with him because he says some really cool stuff yeah he, uh, he's a he's a down-to-earth guy and, and he's a, yeah. he, he he just seems like real you know exactly he's not lying he's like, he, and he's just an idealist and he wants this out he doesn't want the secrets out he wants that look there are other beings and we have proof of it kind of thing and you know we'll also go through some stuff that what what the reason is behind this cover-up you know there are many reasons but mm -hmm. there might be an ultimate reason um just just to switch switch gears quickly you sent me this and i think it's pretty important oh boy it's, uh yeah politics which can get annoying it's so annoying and negative right but we have to throw this in there uh which i didn't know the white house like can control funds but you know this you want to sum this one up uh no i want you to read the uh title yeah. of the article so after they destroyed maui dc holds relief money hostage for ukraine you can't make this stuff up so it says white house funds for maui and florida to be withheld unless congress approves more money for ukraine i mean <laughs> it's absolutely ridiculous that we can send all this uh 
stuff to you, Ukraine, but we can't help, um, you know, our our yeah. people in our own country, for God's right, sakes. Right, right, right. And they're not even at war. It's like, you know, this is they, they've been de- like uh, communities have been decimated, lives lost, uh, you know, families separated. It's just, you know, come on. Come on, but no, we can just throw out throw all these tens of billions of dollars. I know it's in, it's into it's more in, in equipment, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's still money, it's still money coming out of the government and going into corporations. Yeah. So it just shows you how you know they don't care about people's lives or people's feelings. They're like, no, we want what we want. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there there's not really much to talk about on the subject. I mean, we we know how it works. We yeah. like to throw money around the rest of the world. We like to be the world's police, um, but we can't help our own people. I, I, it's it's a shame. Well, because I, I guess it's more money in it for for the ones making the decisions um, yeah. to do that. All right, let's get get, get back to the UFOs. Yeah, please. <laughs> so this is this guy. He's got a cool YouTube channel. We'll 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 share it too. Um, and he takes he's in the Australian outback. And he takes these infrared videos uh, of the sky, and this one is a it's a triangular object that shows up. Uh, there's no there's no audio, but I guess you know for, for YouTube. Mm-hmm. So there it is. It starts to show up. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And he has it in the thermal he's got, right he's here. He's got it in flare too. Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. Look at, look at that thing right yeah, here. Yeah, 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 that, yeah. That's pretty big. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing is, man, I should have gone military. I would love to be on a secret s- space program. You would have done great in the military. Oh, but yeah. Then, sure. no, you, but then you wouldn't be, tell me anything, you know? No, because of course you'd be, not. Yeah, you'd be sworn no, to secrecy. They, what, what they would like, do. What are you talking about? Because there's nothing they would, out there. They would say I died in Iraq, and <laughs> then you would never hear from me again. <laughs> and I'd be completely brainwashed. So... <laughs> I, I have, I have, I wish I did, and I wish I'm glad I didn't. All right, yeah. so next I, I don't know. Are, are you, yeah, but are you of the person like, okay, say you say you did go in the military and say they're like, you know what, we want you to be part of this program, and say that you actually get sworn in and you see it and you look at it and it's verified, would you still not tell a soul because they told you not to, or would you? Would I think you it'd be one of those things where they'd be like, if you tell anybody, we'll kill your entire family. And yeah. so, of course, I wouldn't yeah. say anything. Right. And and, and they're, they're, they're known for saying that. Yeah. Um, so, right, so what do you got here? Well, there's a lot of technology that's coming out also weekly. You know, that, that's that, you know, this gives me that feeling after reading Corso's book and just knowing this stuff that, you know, that these these leaps and bounds of, of, te- of technology like this. Okay, so quantum yeah. batteries that charge wirelessly might never lose efficiency. Oh, they'll they'll find a way. I mean, what what's oh, yeah. that? What's that theory? Not theory. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Uh, where technology is created to break down after a certain amount of time. I'm trying to remember the term for it. And obsolescence. obsolescence. There you go. Yeah, and that came in from the light bulb industry. They started that right because yeah, they they were always pushing. For light bulbs to last longer and longer and longer, and they started lasting longer. And then the companies were like, "Wait a minute!" They got together, like this is not good for business, you know. We yeah, people have... people won't yeah. buy the next iPhone if their iPhone eight lasts for twenty five years, and that is sad. Our system is based on that, and it applies to all industries. So yep. you're right; they might not they might shelve this even because we see this all the time, and then I never see it implemented or in the market. You know, it's yeah. nothing new. Uh, there was another one, another battery, but it, it, was, it was some nuclear process. It was they were it was, they weren't really um, like it wasn't hurtful radiation, but there was still like really small radiation. But they still lasted for thousands of years. These batteries, and I don't see it anywhere. And that was like five years ago, six years ago. Um, anyway, but it's, I you know I love following that you and then you shared with me. The MH370 videos are real posts on um, on Reddit. I don't know what to think of this. What, what I, do you think uh, of MH370 in man, these videos? I keep going back and forth on this one. I know, me too. I, I, I Honestly, I don't know. At this point, I'm not sure what to think. So MH370 was that flight that disappeared. Uh, was, that, was it Singapore? 
or uh, Philippine? MH uh, is uh, is Malaysian Airlines. Malaysian. Okay, man. Yeah. Anyway, there's apparent videos of it disappearing, um, and it's kind of really freaky. It um, is. So, it, but there's yeah. there's been posts going back and forth of it. Um, you know, hey, this is fake, or hey, this is what really happened, and it's kind of it's really hard to determine what the real thing is. I mean, honestly, that whole flight disappearing was bizarre, and they still haven't found any um, crash evidence or anything like that. But this video that we're looking at is the plane, and it's being circled by three. Um, well uaps Mm -hmm. and then it just kind of blips out it's it's bizarre footage i haven't yeah and it's it's, i think this one that we're looking at this is a satellite this is a national reconnaissance office satellite uh looking down and then there's drone footage later on i think which which is in the well it's gone yep it just blips out it's uh uh, truthfully i mean if if this is real and to me, it looks real. This doesn't look like weird CGI or anything like that. But it honestly, yeah, and they've got from the drone. So this is from the drone. Um, and, the, and the thing is, these are these are perfectly, uh, perfectly synced with the uh, there's people who have perfectly synced it with the satellite v- footage. It's perfectly synced. If it's faked, you it's I don't know what I'm saying. I wouldn't say it's impossible. It's almost impossible to sync them up like that. So this is what we're looking at. This is from the drone footage, right? The IR FLIR footage. Um, and you can see- I highly recommend everyone who's listening to the footage or listen, listening to uh, the podcast right now to go check out this footage. It is, uh, man, I don't know. This is. I don't know either. But even the contrail. Oh, see, so you can see the heat of the engine right there. Mm-hmm. But then even the contrails and see their speed. Those objects are speeding up. You can see their heat signatures too. Boom. Yep, just blinks out. Man, that is crazy stuff. It is crazy stuff. And I, it's so crazy that both of us are just going, like, what is this real? Like, like you know, I, I can't the, believe my eyes. The fact that there's so much, like, footage around this. Yeah. I have a hard time believing it'd be faked. I mean, what? A, a whole crowd of people online, like, created all this <laughs> fake footage and stuff? Even if they did, where's the mistakes? No one, no one has, no one has, uh, have said, si- have said anything but like flaws in it. So, yeah, no one's, pro- no one's yeah. proved that it's fake. No, they haven't. No one's debunked it. And nobody uh, has and debunked and it. There's no, there's no wreckage of the craft. I there mean, there we go. Yeah. It's so weird. And that's what they said. So, there's no debris field anywhere. It's a, it's a triple seven crashing into the ocean would have caused a debris field visible from space for days. But the official search didn't find a single piece of the plane above or underwater. You uh, know, there's a whole. Sorry, I was very. That's all right. There's a whole um, there's a whole TV show um, on Netflix that kind of it's called Manifest. It's OK. Um, it's like a six out of ten. All right. um, but it's about bad. it's about a it's about a plane disappearing and then it shows up like a few years later. I'm wondering if this is going to be the. Uh, I'm I'm just it, I'm curious because it came out the same. It's one of those things. It's like um, uh, uh, what's that movie we've talked about it before about the UFO, UFO oh. showing up and it brings all those people back. What's it called? Oh, Arrival. No, oh, no. Oh wait, Pe- it brings the all third people con- back. No, not the uh, uh, the Close Encounters. Yes, Close Encounters. It's yeah. It, it's one of those things where I'm wondering if that TV show was created. Manifest the TV show was created oh. to like uh soften the blow for when this plan shows back up uh you know i i wouldn't i wouldn't be surprised you know because that's, that's what the, that's what the show's about it's about a, a plane that disappears and then comes back i mean netflix did that with covid they released like this i forgot what it was some movie about a pandemic right and maybe it might have been called pandemic right before covid hit and it was all about lockdowns and mass and like you know it's called predictive programming right they've done it yeah um and here's you, you mentioned netflix and this is uh, spielberg's new show perfect called encounters so here's a preview we can watch quickly uh it's pretty good actually the very first time i saw oops sorry something oh. in the sky 
I really hesitated to say anything to anybody. This is where it landed. Half of the doing lights, it was like... Oh, cool. Okay. I was at one with whatever it was. They looked like identical twins. They had a very big head. Cigar shape. What it was. We don't know. This was not a one-off event. These things happen all the time. They happen all the time. Since the 1940s, we've been told by authorities and scientists that this is ridiculous. There were over 60 kids that saw what I saw. It had big eyes. I think whatever people saw was intelligently controlled. And it was not manufactured by the United States or any other nation for that matter. When I've started looking into these stories, we can get files from 30, 40 years ago that we've never been able to see. They were tortured by the fact that no one would listen to them. You know, you try and live a normal life, you try and move on, but it just opens up doors again. My relationship suffered, I suffered, but I'm still on my quest. I will find out what happened. We have to keep relearning that lesson that human beings are not the center of the universe. Most people would say the question is like, are we alone? I think the question is, who are we? That looks, looks good. good. Yeah, so September 27th is coming out. Encounters on Netflix. That looks really good. Yeah, yeah it does. Thank you, Juan, on uh, on Twitter for bringing this, bring that to us. Another person on Twitter, UAP News. He's also got a great website. Uh, is it? Well, are, have you heard? Just quickly before we play that clip, because uh, this is the full interview. Have you heard of Anything Goes with James English? I have not. No, me neither. So he's got like five hundred twenty-four thousand subscribers. He doesn't do UFO stuff, you know, but now because I guess he's he's seeing all these things and in the news and, you know, he's it's he's like really curious. And of course, he's going to be curious about it. But he used his platform to bring on James Fox, uh, director of the phenomenon and out of the blue and, you know, other things. Um, the, the Virginia one. What's that one called? I forget now. Oh, Jesus. You're asking the wrong guy. I'll remember about an hour after we stop recording. Okay, which is totally, I'm, I'm there with you. Uh, so let's, let's do a small clip of that, and then we'll share the entire interview for everyone, uh, for everyone yeah. listening. To. James Fox is awesome, man. Let's He's been after, Yeah. There is an individual that is on the verge of, of going public, and I thought that your audience might like to um, hear from this. Okay. Here we go. Hello, James. This is a first-hand intel guy, witness. Hello, James. It's been a while since we collaborated, collaborated on a public statement. As you know, I'm working to get private industry and Congress to collaborate on the UAP materials and biologics. Yes, both are part of the legacy program. I know we had a few oddball comments from folks who haven't been in the program, but as someone with first-hand knowledge and knowing other first-hand experiencers, we have been asked to formalize our testimony through the same ICIG, it's Intelligence Community Inspector General process that David Grush went through. Unlike David, I personally have not experienced any attacks from the government hmm. nor DOD. My reason for coming forward is purely to provide factual information concerning the people, locations, private laboratories, and research facilities that exist around the world in an effort to help the investigative process. It's always my hope that the DOD, Pentagon, and the Legacy Program people are allowed to get out from under the heavy-handed weaponization of the exotic technologies they have. Mm. I believe there is a solid path for everyone to come forward without reprisal and to help mankind by making the non-classified aspects more transparent and available for the sectors of our societies that involve medicine, energy production, and the enlightenment of our collective mindset as human beings. I'm encouraged by all the hard work that many unsung heroes are doing behind the scenes, and I can tell you this a lot. 
um, as well as in the public domain. I will be coming forward when the time is right. I wish you and everyone you read this letter to all the blessings and goodwill they deserve. The truth is now being revealed, and I promise to continue doing my part. Damn. I hope it's true, man. I hope it's true. I hope they come out. You know, that guy, he's, he's a, he's a, because people also, also say, tell us, talk about Grush and say, well, uh, he, he didn't witness, it was like a friend telling him that, or, uh, like, the, like the NASA guides, you know, said that, you know, he didn't see that stuff. It's just someone telling him that, you know? Yeah. Uh, but I mean, it's, it's one of those, it's one of those things where like, I don't know. I mean, there's still the same, um, what's it called there's still the same thing like if you come forward and you say i saw a ghost everyone yeah. kind of rolls their eyes and goes oh okay you know whatever man <laughs> and we're starting to take you you know ufos and uap whatever the same thing yeah a little bit more seriously but there's mm -hmm. still a little bit especially if you're in you know the military or in a professional field everyone's going to look at you funny and you're going to be, Oh, he, yeah. you know, he's the UFO guy. He's the, he's the ghost guy. You know what I mean? He's yeah, the, yeah. he's the Bigfoot guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, but you know, and it, yeah, Go ahead. no, I was just going to say, I mean, we're starting, we're finally starting to get to the point where people take you seriously when you talk about this stuff. But I think a lot of people who have been, uh, especially in the military for a long time, um, you, you know, people are, will stop taking you seriously if you mention these things. Yeah, and because they'll be brought in for a psychological. Uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah. So, but Congress and the government has has now put in procedures and laws to remove that stigma. Apparently, that's what they say. Yeah. Um, so th this fits in perfectly because he's talking about the ICIG. So, if we remember last week or the week before, we. Um, Representative Tim Burchett and I think it was Matt Gates and Luna, they wrote a letter to the ICIG saying that we want a, if you get if you did interviews and blah blah blah, we want them, you know, or and also give us access to a skiff where we can see where Grush can tell us, you know, the names of the people and the projects and the locations. So of course, in true fashion of this subject and the government. Um, now it says unclassified here, but they, the inspector general of the intelligence community wrote back to Burchette saying, um, the lawful channel Congress established is the urgent concern process. You know, that, and that's why he's being, he's, that's why Grush is protected. But they're saying here that they didn't do any audit, even though Grush said that the ICIG went and interviewed the 40 people he interviewed. And because of that, those interviews and that, audit that they did they said it was urgent and credible right but they're mm -hmm. saying here they didn't do that oh uh, shocker our, our government uh says something that they didn't do right when when, when they did and but i mean is it because it's unclassified so because because what they did was classified that it gives them an excuse to lie to a you know one two three four five six sitting congress people nancy mace Burchette, Muskowitz, Burleson, Luna, and then Ogles, Andy Ogles or Ogles. Um, Ogles? Ogles, maybe. But it's just, so where is it? What he says, uh, also national, okay, additional and important of these reportings require. Okay, as a matter of discretion, ICIG notes that it has not conducted any audit, inspection, evaluation, or review of alleged UAP programs within the responsibility and authority of the DNI, which is a def oh, defense national uh, DNI is a defense oh, that's have... right that's what he did, he threw it over to the head of DNI uh, you know, I forget what it is, but there's a central location where all intelligence goes to and that's what DNI is Hmm. So DNI that would enable this office to provide a fulsome response to your question. Okay, so he he threw it to the head of DNI, and DNI did nothing with it. Well, not yet. Yeah, because this was when was this dated? It was September fifteenth, so two days ago. Two days ago, they said that. Oh yeah, we didn't do anything, but you, maybe you should ask this person here. 
at DNI would enable this office. You know, so that's what it is. It's just maybe he's just playing classified games or whatever. No, I I think it's the word that I refuse to say again. Um, starts with an S and ends with kism. Um, <laughs> no, you should continue because that's what's going on. Yeah, that's that's certainly what it feels like. Looking after you know after looking at all the uh, evidence and everything yeah. that's going on, there's one part of the government that wants one thing and there's another part of the government that wants another thing yeah. and it makes sense they're humans you know these are humans just like you and i you know and they all have their own ideals their own upbringing you know these are not robots right can you so imagine can you imagine if our government um like all of it 100 percent of it wanted transparency and to like be uh truthful with their yeah. constituents can you imagine yeah. I mean, unfortunately, uh, government also attracts, it attracts idealists, but it also attracts psychopaths and sociopaths. Yep. So that's why we see this thing. You know, most humans are not psychopaths and sociopaths. They're a small percentage, but they are overrepresented in, represented in governments, in my opinion, because it just attracts those type of people. So, you know, you have yeah. those that want to use that for their own good, right? The, to to further their own career, to get more money, mm -hmm. to get more power, whatever it is. And there's people that want to be like uh, head of the Hono Homeowners Association. Yeah. <laughs> people who want to be mayors and the most psychopathic people want to be you know, uh, Congress people or presidents or Especially whatever. presidents. Especially president. Why would yeah. you want to be president of the United States? You know? Yeah. Um, Complete psychos. Yeah, yeah, seriously. Now, uh, fairobserver.com, it, it seems pretty mainstream. Uh, there's a, this is a great article that goes through the, it says, UFO disclosure, the most significant law in human history. So this is, they're talking about the NDAA and uh, all the UFO, UAP laws in there with an imminent domain, with uh, the, the subcommittee that they're creating to start declassifying historical UFO stuff. Um, it's a great article. It, it's long, but it goes through everything um, and the reasons behind it. So definitely a good read. I don't know. We're, we're, I mean, we're not going to go through it here. Yeah, I was going to say it's a, it's a good read, but let's uh, uh, we'll, yeah. we'll put it in the show notes, but let's move on to the next one. Yeah, so... You know, on, on that note, and we've talked about this before, I think in another, I haven't read this book, so I don't know, but it says new book release, History of Computers, book reveals how UFO technology shaped today's internet. Yeah, that doesn't, I mean, just based on the, the title of the article, this doesn't surprise me at all. At, at all. Yeah. Um, uh, supposedly, this is how we got Wi-Fi as well. Oh, and Wi-Fi? Because, mm -hmm. yeah, I, and be, uh, and I don't know if this goes back. There was and, and we can find it on the archive, archive.org, um, the Internet Archive. But there was a company called American Computer Systems, I think, and they had a blog post from the from the owner of it or the founder, talking about how uh, Bell Labs, Bell Labs, uh, when they made the integrated circuit, it was fed to them from the military and it was inspired from the Roswell from you know, parts of the Roswell craft. And it wasn't, they're basically saying it wasn't, it didn't come from themselves. They were, it was inspired and then they created it and then patented it and all that. So I wonder if that's in there. Um, so it says here, John Costello, a computer designer himself, uh, writes in a friendly, easy to read style that makes this history text feel like anything but a college textbook. Oh, that's right. They don't really, oh, here it is. The IBM mainframe. Uh, but I don't know Wi-Fi, huh? You said you said Wi-Fi too. Yeah, I mean, there's rumors of that. I mean, think about it. We went from uh, dial-up to um, what was the thing with the tubes, and then we uh, went, yeah, and then we uh, vacuum tubes. Well, no, that's not what I'm saying. Anyway, we went from dial-up to faster dial-up to Wi-Fi super quickly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when the author was working on this chapter about the internet, he uncovered this story about the flying saucer connection that had been buried since the 1990s. Everyone that's heard the story so far has said, "Wow!" So it it was this was released September 12th. We'll link the book. I I want to read this book actually. Um, History of computers creating a digital world. So there's a there's one chapter in there about linking it to UFOs. 
Um, and here we go. There's uh, NASA. Uh, NASA oh came- never, never a straight answer. They came out with their uh, historical. Their report was revealed this God, week. They're so full of shit. <laughs> I, you know, like <laughs> space travel, I think is super cool. Yeah, um, me too. NASA. I my opinion of them has been dropping and dropping, and you know, ever since I've been alive, because I thought and they were like their the leader, coolest part of our government, and now they just kind of suck. I know, and they're just part of this cover up. So you know, and and we'll get through some issues with this. Um, I don't know if we want digging to... on Mars with the Perseverance rover in those little titanium tubes that we intend to go back and pick up digging in a dry lake bed near the mouth of a river now we're going up to the top right, wait, i want to listen to him because he even in the, in the in the questions and answers like he made fun of grush like he didn't even probably listen to his testimony uh um, no of course not their no, their, jo- their job is to to make ufos and aliens into a joke yeah, it kind of is. He, as as Bill just eloquently said, Actually, you know what? I'm not I'm not gonna waste my time with this. It was really just stupid. It was annoying. Yeah. Let's hear let, let's hear what uh like Dolan has to say about what happened there. I think this is a great take. Um, and I agree with it. So let's let's listen to this. NASA just came out with their, I guess you could say long awaited uh, statement on UAP. It was interesting. They pointed out that hey, we're not here to study all the UFO reports, people. This is just about our methodology moving forward. I'm like, okay. They did, however, issue their report in which they did some analyses. Uh, Basically, the cases that you got out of the arrow, so the Mosul uh, phenomenon and um, some of the other things that were in the arrow report. It's not annoying how government does that. Because it was already out there, because arrow is already doing it, that's all they're looking at. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like because it's been sanctioned and approved, and you know, so that's all you're allowed to do. You can't can't think out of this box. You know, they just love controlling like minds and like you know. Anyway, yeah, I just you know, I, I love how looking at uh, previous articles makes it proof. You, yeah, you know, you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I uh, stub my toe on a table, and so therefore the table stubs toes. <laughs> you know what i mean like it's just uh-huh. it's the stupidest f- yeah yeah whatever so let's dumb, play so it. Dumb. keep playing it conclusion is no evidence that these are extraterrestrial that's right i forgot to mention that they said that no there's no proof that these are extraterrestrial even and though just, all, no. all the astronauts that have gone, gone up in space have have right. talked about all the shit yeah. that they've seen right it's, it's exactly so frustrating they're ignoring them their own yeah. astronauts you know yep Yep. Uh, and you know, just as a joke, I think last week we put on Twitter like, okay, we're gonna guess what this UA, what what NASA's UAP report said, quote by quote, and it, it, they literally said that because we knew they would say that. Mm-hmm. We knew that said there's no uh, conclusive evidence that this is extraterrestrial or maybe they're playing games. We've said that before, also on the show, they're playing like semantics that, and that's why Grush and others are saying non-human intelligence. Or maybe they're trying to force the government. To start using that term, and maybe they won't say that there's no evidence of. Non-human. It's just, it's just, it's bad science. I know, and they call it that, yeah, but they're the science. <sighs> All tables and, don't stub toes. Yes, exactly. And you know, they talked about transparency, mm-hmm. data integrity, all that moving forward. Sure, but here's the thing that I notice <laughs> in all of this, and I'm not even blaming the people at NASA for this, but it's like I am. <laughs> You completely forget the fact that after 80 years of this, their whole attitude is, well, we got to just start with a clean slate. There's no good data in the past to look at. And they were really quite explicit, especially in the press conference. The data is just not very good. Uh We need good data. And I'm thinking 80 years, there's nothing. You're going to tell me in 80 years, the United States government, we have document after document of military concern and frequently extremely explicit performance characteristics of these objects uh, taken with sensitive instrumentation. It's not like they were living in the Middle Ages back in the (laughs) 1950s. None of that is being referred to. And it's almost this like quiet little agreement. Let's not discuss the past. Let's just wipe it all clean. Right. And we're going to start over. 
as if nothing ever happened. Ah. Uh, you want the data integrity, but do we really want to just erase our whole history? Because that's what it looks like to me. And yeah. it makes them guilty. That is a that is a really good take. I mean, how many videos do we have of yeah. weird objects entering our atmosphere and then flying off from we have these videos from space? I know, I know. Yes. And we've had since the Reagan era, we've had, you know, SDI, Star Wars. Yeah. You know, all those the satellites up there. They used to catch these things. And I think they, they were, that's when they first called them fast walkers. They would show up, they'll detect them coming in from space and then coming into Earth. So what? that's just all thrown away, but it is because national security, right? Like, oh, sorry, guys. You can't oh, use geez. that. Our adversaries would know. National security. The, the stupidest term. The most frustrating term of all time, national security. Yeah, the greatest excuse. Uh, there was another interview that... The, they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna start classifying tables as national <laughs> security because they can't figure out why people keep stubbing their toes on them. <laughs> Oh, that's so funny. Yeah, I mean, when you put it in that in, in in that context, and you you only force people to only speak about things, yeah, and like something even as stupid as that, like it's the table only, <laughs> and you can't allow you're not allowed to have any other questions. That's yeah, gonna be, that's gonna be your conclusion. Yeah, so dumb. Uh, you know, so dumb. did you know that uh, tables are actually a myth? And no one's uh, ever no one's ever actually seen a table. No one's ever seen one. <laughs> Yeah, they're part of the environment, you know. I don't think uh, anything's really created them, and they're. Um, Although, they're... I heard w one of my cousins. He was uh, walking in the forest one day, and he, he did see a table. Um, <laughs> I, I don't believe him though, because it's, uh, you know, wait, that... it was randomly there, just a table sitting in the middle of the forest. Yep. Um, wow. I don't. I don't believe him though, because of national security. <laughs> Maybe it was a Bigfoot that made it. No, you can't talk about that. Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. That's, that's out of the realm. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, uh, and and Dolan did another interview with um, Alien Mafia. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's really funny. This guy, what's his name? He's still around. Uh, Leak Project. He's been around for a while. Uh, he's funny. He always says, "Hey, how the heck are you?" Uh, he always starts like with that. And he's got anyway. He's he's done really well. But he asked um, Dolan here. It's a long interview, but he asked Dolan like. You know why the extraterrestrial hypothesis, right? Because people talk about extra, you know, dimensions. They're dimensional beings, or from the future, or um. So he he talks about, and he knows a lot, Dolan, right? So th anyway, let's just play this clip. I don't want to summarize or put words in his mouth. I don't really know how to understand that. All I can say is people uh, way way smarter than me. This is what they think is possible. And so there you go. That's one possibility. But I still think the extraterrestrial hypothesis uh, is actually has the, the neatest and least complicated explanatory vision for me. And, um, you know, you see in this field, I mean, for the last 50 plus years, people have really been kind of into all of these alternative hypotheses from, from Jacques Vallée and John Keel and right on through talking about different dimensions because it just seems cooler. I don't know. It seems more interesting. Valet back in the seventies said, my God, if the, if it turns out that it's just the extraterrestrial hypothesis, that'll be a real letdown. <laughs> so boring. <laughs> Basically what he said. And I think that was not the best thing for him to have said. I'm going to be honest. I mean, I love Jacques Valet's work, but uh, I think, I don't think that was really very helpful. And, uh, I think it's a much simpler proposition to look at this as we've got, we ourselves see ourselves having the ability to, to go elsewhere, whether through avatars or whether, you know, we may be able to warp space and time, but it's really not an impossibility. Why should it be impossible to think that someone else has been able to find us and come here as well? I, I, mean, I think I, that's what's happened. He knows something though. You can just tell in his eyes. I mean, he knows something. Well, someone told him something. There's a lot of um, hypotheses as to why we're not being visited. I and I think one of the most we're out in the sticks, essentially. You know, uh, right? Yeah, yeah. That, that they're around us. They're and they're close by. They're not that far, right? Is that what, is that what you mean? No, I just I you know I I tend to be on the the Jacques Vallée side and think uh. that they're interdimensional and. Um, yeah. 
aliens from other planets aren't visiting us because they can't find us because we're out in the sticks. Oh, okay, yeah, it is, it's, uh, that's not what I thought you meant. Yeah, uh, no. that's. But, I mean, and, and interdimensional doesn't mean like that they're not physically here, though. You know, another dimension. No, of course okay. not. So here's a question for you. So, so, so humans have a limited visual ability, right? We can't see ultraviolet. We can't see infrared. Mm-hmm. Um. So if something's there that's in in the, in the infrared or in the ultraviolet, is that ultra another dimension? Because I can't see it. Or is I don't it even physically here. I I can't even answer that. I don't I don't know. Okay. Um cuz it's still in the physical space, but I just can't see it. Right. Uh, right. I mean I think there's a possibility of that for sure, absolutely. Yeah, I, but, I would think so too. That that but, but I guess it, in physics that's not another dimension though, right? I don't know. No, I, I don't know. It's just a different uh visual range. Visual um, range. You're right. Okay. Yeah. But it's still in the physical space. I mean, because a lot, I mean, I bring that but up. I, I, I think I, I think if something was in our physical dimension and we just couldn't see it, oh shit, maybe that's what ghosts are. But maybe but, right. And, and maybe that's the game that our agencies are playing, including NASA, saying that's not extraterrestrial. Maybe it's just terrestrial. We cannot see it. We see with instruments, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Because you know they can get in trouble for like lying. You know these are <laughs> no, they can't. Our what government... am I talking about? <laughs> our government has proven that they can get away they with lying. Side coming out. <laughs> they lie about everything. Yeah. Um, I, well, I, I don't yeah. think it's a uh physical uh visual spectrum um i think it's i just think it's different i think our i think our reality like th- think about two dimensional versus three dimensional right mm-hmm, mm-hmm. if you got one that's flat you got one that's 3d and four you go up D, yeah. you go up a level what does right. that even look like we we can't even as humans we can't even fathom that. No, we can't. And yeah, and, and Sagan goes through that, right? He has he, he has a famous clip where he shows a not a tetrahedron. Is a tetrahedron on the in the well, fourth no, dimension? One of one of the things he said is like imagine you're looking down at a flat piece of paper and there's all these flat objects right moving around it, you know, right. triangles, squares, circles, mm-hmm. whatever. And then you drop your finger into there, and what the what the what do they see? Because they're two dimensional things. All they see are, you know, lines the, the and circle. flat objects. But they see a circle. That's yeah. all they'll see. Even if you if you push it all the way through their flatland, right? All they'll see right. is a circle that shows up or a dot and then a circle. And then when it goes away, a smaller dot and it's gone. But they can't even they can't even fathom that. No. And so us in our 3D dimension, what happens yeah. when something from another dimension shows up in our reality? Yeah, we yeah. couldn't even fathom that. It's gonna ballet. look something. It's gonna look like a UFO, maybe, or an alien, right. mm-hmm. because think... our, our human minds have to craft it into something that we can understand. Yeah, we're stuck in this dimension. We can't. Yeah. We have no other way of. Uh, I mean, we can. We can uh, understand the concept of it, but we can't see it. Is that right. makes sense? Yeah, and, and Valet uses, I think, he, what do you say? They're, they're a window to another dimension. And mm-hmm. uh, that makes some sense, too, because some UFOs, and he, he said this when he's interviewed some abductees, where they'll see a craft, but then they're in the craft. And then he's, these people say when they're in the craft, there's stairs, and it, it's as big as a, as a movie theater or a, something, something much bigger than the craft. And, th- and that's right. why he says that it is like a portal to another world or an or an observation deck to another start on the world, another dimension. Uh, and that's why it's so small here. But once you're, you enter it, it's huge. Mm-hmm. Um, well, that's, yeah. <clears throat> you know, that's why I think we're, you know, and I've said this before on the show, we're half the phenomenon. We we're yeah. kind of like an antenna. Mm-hmm. And when they come in as, you know, radio waves or whatever, our mind projects something that we're able to comprehend. Yeah, and it's maybe for them too. They want to experience time in a different way. Also, mm-hmm. um, I, I think if you're seriously in another dimension and you're and you come down to this one, time obviously is different. But maybe you can live out a whole life here, like eighty years, a hundred years. Mm-hmm. But back then, I mean, back there, it's like a night of sleep, like just sleeping a night, like a dream. Yeah, you know no, I mean? definitely, or like a week or whatever it is. Uh, people that have taken 
uh, is it ayahuasca? Not ayahuasca. Or ayahuasca. DHT? Is it DHT ayahuasca? Well, there's another one that's that's in its in, in, in a stronger form. Uh, they smoke oh, God. something. I thought ayahuasca was like the strongest. There's, you know, there, there's shrooms. Oh, DMT. No, you, you, uh, you oh, can take DMT. Oh, DMT. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I've heard like there's a math, mathematician who did an interview on T DMT. He said he went through an entire lifetime. He, he said a whole lifetime. And they came back. And it was 15 minutes. And he came back. You know? Could you imagine that? <laughs> That's no. what it felt like to him. <laughs> This is this is why I don't ever I've never taken hallucinogenics. I mean, <laughs> it scares the hell out of me. So it's something, know, yeah. my mind's so messed up. I don't want to, you know, mess it up more. Yeah. <laughs> well, the good thing about yeah, I mean, you shouldn't do it on on um on a company and on uh, without a yeah, guy. You're supposed, a, you're supposed to have a babysitter. Yeah, and that's what ayahuasca. You can go and, and there's a shaman there, and he wants to he wants to understand your goals, and they interview you. You know what I mean? Like it's really catered for you not to have a bad trip but to actually help you um along your journey um but yeah so anyway <laughs> we, deviated, <laughs> we deviated a little bit there um but yeah, let's, move, let's move on well well people brought this up you know and this is still we're talking about the nasa uh press release and in october Never 7th sure, 1993 yeah, yeah. the ex-nasa mission specialist bob oh Osh good luck Oshler, I think it's Oxler. 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 You're right. Oxler. Talks to Nikki Campbell, BBC Radio. It's a great interview. 25 minutes. We're not going to play everything. But this guy came out of the 90s and said what he knew. He's a NASA guy and said what he knew and what the government came to him to, to study. Anyway, let's listen to him. I, we've played him before. I mean, it just sucks that NASA's like, there's no proof of extraterrestrial. I you never know. straight answer. I never straight answer. The government knows very well what. <laughs> Nicky Campbell into the night. Well, it's on nights like this that we look up into the stars or look up into the starless, cloudy sky and think, are we alone? My special guest is Bob Exler, investigations Exler. analyst is Exler. Ex okay. of NASA. And Bob has an extraordinary story which he's about to tell about aliens and alien craft and governmental cover-ups. Bob, how long were you with NASA? I was with NASA in the mid-70s, uh, working on several projects, including the Apollo Soyuz test project. I'm really jealous of his voice. Like a, a radio voice kind of thing. Yeah, you know? he's got the uh, yeah, 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 exactly. really yeah. sound. <laughs> Jack had worked on the docking collar that mated the two craft. Also worked on the International Ultraviolet Explorer, several deep space projects, and some Department of Defense projects. Uh, Wait, did he say ultraviolet explorer? So yeah, see, that's why they're seeing shit. And then the no, 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 no. Go, go. I don't think or he the, said or it. the okay. infrared is it infrared. Yes, go back. Apollo Soyuz test project. I worked on the docking collar that mated the two craft. Also worked on the International Ultraviolet Explorer. So ultraviolet uh, explorer. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Deep space projects and some Department of Defense projects. And deep space projects and Department of Defense projects. And in the end, uh, you've left and you've um, sort of come out of the UFO closet, if you like. Well, I don't know how, how, how... UFO closet, actually. <laughs> but it's not rather embarrassing for your ex-colleagues in the light of what you've said about alien retrieved craft and so forth, that you've, you've spilled a few beans that uh, were I to believe your story, they would have wanted to keep in the can. Well, that's partially true, but what from what I got, you see, I ended up getting guidance. Uh, I was called in because of my expertise in uh, remotely operated airborne robotic systems yeah. uh, to evaluate some uh, activities that had been recorded on video films. Uh, there was some rather extraordinary physics. Uh, in fact, it appeared as though the objects were violating the laws of physics as we know them. Anyway. Hang on, NASA called you in to analyze these video films? No, I wasn't called in by NASA. I was called in by an agency in Washington, D.C., uh, a couple of different agencies, in fact, that had been addressed. Uh, one was the Department of the Navy. Had you left NASA by this point? Yes, I had. Right. And I was asked to utilize the facilities of the NASA facility at Goddard Space Flight Center to review. How does that make sense? So he left NASA. And then, of course, government agencies called him back. He's not saying who they are. He's at the Department of the Navy, um, you know, to study this thing. But then he's using NASA facilities to do it. I don't know, man. I feel like our government is uh, weird. Or he's lying. I have no idea. I don't know what to think about this. <laughs> 
Yeah. Who some of the well, if you listen to this and, and if you listen to this all the way through, he does say that he thinks he might be part of a a campaign to educate the public. Uh because the guy asked him, like, why why you like you know, why are you allowed to say this stuff? Uh, let's see, I randomly clicked. Do you think it's the right place place? Oh, of course. Buffering. Of well, course. Well, let's let's play an ad. Is that what's going on here? I have no idea. Anyway, um, yeah. Anyway, we'll leave it in the show notes so people. Yeah, can go ahead and give that a listen, uh, listeners. Um. So uh, also coming up from NASA, and I yeah I, you I've sent talked, you sent this to me. Yeah, and and I've talked about this before, and, and this was this came out in the early two thousands, um, and it really for me at least it pushed me over the edge. Um, about what these things are and that, that they're not human or that it's, that it's real. How about that? That it's real. Um, and these are the secret NASA transmissions, a smoking gun. I'm sure we've talked about them before. Yes, we have. Um, and he was a satellite operator in Canada, and he just pointed his satellite to the NASA one, which wasn't public. He downloaded all the entire feed and would watch hours and hours and then caught anomalous stuff, recorded them, put them on DVD, and they're called the secret NASA tr- transmission. And we still use those till today. The STS uh, tether footage, right, where these things start just going after the tether. Mm-hmm. Um, guy's, a, guy's a straight up hero. Yeah, that one that came in, that UFO that came in slowly, and then we shot something at it, and it took off before the the rail gun or whatever it was, you know, shot at it. Um, that that thing over Africa. These cameras are in the UV, right? Ultraviolet, so we can't see them. But the see, cameras. This is what I'm are. talking about. How cool would it be to be on the USS Helen Corp or whatever the heck it's called? Yeah. yeah. Just be on a space station, a secret space station. I just think that'd be so much fun. Oh, it's so much fun. Like, why shouldn't all of us have access to that too? Yeah, you know, no the old kidding. United States, the old ideals would have given us all of us access to it. But Helen then, Quarter. Sorry. Helen Quarter. Yeah. But then they'd be like, "Oh, but then Russia might have access to it." So what? I mean, I don't know. I don't know. You know, I, you know, does that make us yeah. into globalists? And then we want a new world order. Then and yeah, you know, I know. I was just thinking about that same thing. <laughs> right. And, and like, and, like yeah. you know, I think we should keep our borders closed. But I don't think it's the worst thing in the world to work with other countries to be in space. No, we share the same planet. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. That is a good point. It, it, you know, it's, I, I don't know. Yeah, like, why is it one or the other? Why is it like, you know, it's we have to protect all this to be, to be a national country uh, or that's it, you know, our adversaries were have it. I mean, all right, so, I mean, or maybe, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe we have peace because of that. Yeah, who knows? It's above my pay grade, as they say. Right, because we're getting paid zero dollars for this. So. <laughs> oh, this? Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> we're actually putting in money into it, right? Well, yeah, not yeah, yeah, yeah. Money. Hey, All right. So, what do you what do you got here? What's this? Have an eye under the Chinese? Oh, yeah. So, this is CIA whistleblower's bombshell claim about COVID conspiracy. This came out five days ago. Um, do you so know we're going back that? into politics. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, no, no. It's fine. I... It's only because the whole CIA thing and NASA and like you know what our government does and hides and it's just even for normal stuff. We're well, not normal stuff. Well, but... and now you know COVID's coming back and it's going to be a whole thing. Yeah. Hopefully well, not, but we'll see. So I'll just say the quote here: "The whistleblower, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> who presents." Uh, who presents as a highly credible senior level CIA officer alleges that of the seven members assigned to the CIA team tasked with analyzing COVID-19 origins, six officers concluded that the virus likely originated from a lab in Wuhan, China. The House's select subcommittee on the coronavirus pandemic said in a press release, the CIA then, however, allegedly offered financial incentives to six of the experts involved in the investigation to change their conclusion in favor of a zoonotic origin. Well, I mean, we saw this with, with Fauci and we covered it on an earlier episode where, yeah. you know, the, there were two researchers that said, Hey, this is, you know, lab grown. And then they got both paid, whatever it was, $8 million or something. And then they oh, yeah. both changed their tune. I right. mean, 
the yeah, the, but don't, but those were contractors. But yeah, they, uh, they gave him a million dollars each extra for changing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it's such a such a shame, and it most is. people either you know won't know this or they won't believe it, and it just sucks because the people who are uh, old school woke, well, you know, they see what's going on. Yeah, um, and there's nothing. I mean, what am I? What am I going to do about this? What are you going to do? Well, about this? I mean, you know, if I mean, we can't. I mean, yeah, I, mean, I, I mean, I try to bring this stuff up in like conversations sometimes when there's like you know drinking going on or whatever. I, you know, when people's like uh, their um, their emotions are just a bit, uh, or, or I mean, they don't have what's that called? But you just you just get an eye roll, and then you know, yeah, like, if people are sober, yeah, you know, <laughs> or even that, know, like, if not. What yeah. am I going to do at at work? Stand at my desk? Well, and... not at work. Yeah. No, I'm just saying there's there's nothing people can do about this. The I guess who, contact your representatives, brains. though. I mean, if, if, if you have this, this what, knowledge. What, 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 what is our local representative? What are they going to do? Like our, our congressmen and senators, like, what are they going to do about this? Yeah, what are they going to do? Yeah, and plus your name is going to be on the list probably if you call them. You know, right. I had a friend, I had a friend, you know, who's with me on on everything, and I was like, oh, I'm going to be politically active. I'm going to ask my. He goes, dude, I would never put my name on any of those. He goes, no, why would you want to? Why why would you want to put your name on? You know, being an activist, you'd be on the list. He goes, get, you know, yeah, you get that. Kind of I don't terrorist. Do that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So there's that. So scratch that. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, what we can do is, is arm our arm ourselves with knowledge, and that way, you know, we can. Go through any that way we can we can talk us. about it on a podcast and and that fun. yes <laughs> yeah right, let's, exactly. let's it's, it's, it's it's like our therapy session <laughs> yeah exactly all right well, what do you got here so oh this, I sent this sent to me you. this yeah you sent me this and it goes with the CIA we don't thing. have to watch the whole thing no I so, know but but it has... we don't have to watch we don't have to watch any of it but I highly okay. recommend our listeners uh, go ahead and watch this video. The title is the CIA is a terrorist organization, and that's true. And yeah. this video lays out all of the terrible, terrible things that they've done. Um, yeah. There is no reason for them to exist. All they do is cause horror and terror and uh, hurt. They hurt people. They do. And they lie and they cheat. And, and they you steal. Know. And they steal. Is, is that famous clip right of our when Trump was uh, president? Uh, his his state guy, uh, his Department of State guy, uh, Pompeo. Pompeo. Is and this isn't clip. and this isn't conspiracy theory. This no. is all truth. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he, it's backed up by facts. It's so. God, yeah. it sucks what our CIA does. But he was laughing about it. It was an interview, and they asked him about because he was head of CIA before he was Department of State. He goes, he goes. We we lied, we cheat, we stole. He goes, we have we have courses on that that we teach how to do that. You know, and he's yeah. laughing. Oh man! <laughs> I mean, so. our Jesus Christ, <laughs> our government are is just the worst. I mean, I, I don't get me wrong. I love I love living here in the U.S. of A. Um, it's a great our system. It's our a great place system. to live. We've got yeah. great people. We've got uh, yeah. great. Um, great community Dumbass overall people. we've got great locale um but good lord our government is terrible yeah i mean and they did it in the name of protecting national security that's what ruined it the whole national right. security thing i mean that, and all they did was make rich, rich people richer that's always what it is that's what national security means yeah protect those yep. families those original families yep yeah, is my feelings like if they get hurt or if they're if they're implicated in anything serious then uh, you gotta hide it. Yeah, shit. Look at the Bidens. I mean, look at his son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're, they're trying to make it about the Bidens, but yes, it should be because he wouldn't be where he was if he didn't take advantage of his father. He has his father wrapped around his little finger, and you can see it. Whatever he wants, you know. I mean, he does give him ten percent, but <laughs> no, the you gotta pay the big guy. <laughs> you gotta pay the big guy. Well, he's another big one. Just moving away from that stupid politics. Um, yeah, you, more UFO stuff. Let's go. This yeah, is a so, this is a big yeah. story. So the Mexicans had a UFO Congress congressional hearing, like we did, but in pure Mexican style, they really did it. They brought out 
the aliens. Uh, and this is Hamy. Yeah, that's his name. Hamy Mausan. He's a well-known ufologist. Um, I know a lot of people on UFO Twitter or UFO X made fun of this. Um, like, oh, come on. The mainstream media took this uh, seriously. Um, I don't know what, what account this is, but she's Mexican. So I think she was uh, translating or she put... Here, let's give a listen. That's um, Fade from Black. Superaban oh, it's considerablemente la de sus aviones de combate. It's in Spanish. We could probably just, we could probably just sum this up. I don't, I don't know if anyone's. Yeah, so it. basically, he they brought out alien corpses. Uh, they said they were found. Uh, they're a thousand year in, old. They were found in Peru, I believe. In Peru, in a mine, right? Yeah. It's, it's, it, you know, I'm torn on this one as well. Um, this was a big story um this past week because they brought out and they literally showed the alien corpses a lot of people are saying it's fake um a lot of people are saying this is real um what are your thoughts on it I yeah know. I, know. I, I, watched, I watched one where it, they were showing the bones like why is this mixed and matched why is this like some of the bones were not um, in the right er- in the right area; they were flipped or something. Same thing with the finger joints they were showing. Um, but if it's alien, maybe that's why. I don't yeah, know. And, I don't... and like the skull is a llama skull, right? Some guy said. Well, so um, people online have shown how the corpses line up with other alien corpses that has yeah. been supposedly found in other parts of the world. Um, it kind of looks like ET from that movie. Um, it does, or like the ones from the Close Encounters. Yeah, I don't. I, I honestly, but like and people, you know, th- we've got X rays and all this other shit of the corpses. It's truly bizarre. Um, I honestly, I God, I I'm so torn on this one. I really don't know. Look how it, tiny it, they are, though. How is that? I mean, okay, fine, maybe. They are they're small. They're like a foot long, maybe. Oh my god, come on. Yeah, okay. I don't, right. I don't... I mean, they're not they're not saying these things created craft or anything. I think they're just saying they're non human, right? So that's what this is. It's just that they found evidence of non human maybe not intelligence. <sighs> They've got these elongated heads. Um it's hard to describe they're super skinny i don't know man i don't know if i buy this one it's weird that oh. it got so much attention from the mexican government though yeah and gaia you know that that tv network yeah or, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah they 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 apparently paid a million dollars to test the dna of these things uh, it turns out they have only 35 percent human dna this is the clip of them this is from the black vault uh, dot com John Greenwald, he he shared it on Twitter. So this is the actual footage of them mm-hmm. in the congressional hearing. There they are. I mean, could you? Mexico's not a joke. That's a, a, a big country. It's a big country with a huge population, you know. And this is an official congressional hearing, and they bring these things out. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. Like, that's the thing. Is like. I feel like if this was a, a hoax, they wouldn't have gotten this far. He was under oath. I mean, I guess he doesn't care. Okay, so here are just, I guess, for our YouTube also, here are some uh, some other images. Uh, this is, I think these are the x-rays right here. Of the yeah, movie. there it is. I know one of them had like eggs in it or something. Yeah, exactly. Yep, there it is right there. there. What the hell are those? Like, so what? They're reptiles? I don't know, man. I mean, but truthfully, if we were to find aliens on our planet in this f- form uh, we wouldn't be able to understand right i mean that's the whole point of alien they wouldn't yeah, yeah. They, there you go good point it wouldn't be like us yeah such a good point such a good point yeah they're gonna be alien it's gonna look different yeah uh so, so weird though but the, but the mainstream media is not making fun of it you know uh yeah, my, some my, of them are oh they are okay. <laughs> well no maybe the alternative media is but but uh, but like mainstream is too. You saw something where they're making fun of it. Well, no, I don't know. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think so. I don't know. It's been a long week. Well, I'm always saying because like NPR didn't like those ones, the, the top top ones, which we always like say don't even listen to them, which is kind of strange. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, 
Did they even take Grush seriously? I don't think so. Well, they're going to find every, you know, opportunity to discredit him. That's what mainstream media does. Something, hey, we don't like this thing. This goes against our our, yeah. uh, our narrative. Right, yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, people look at that, look into it. You know, we're not saying it's true, not true. Um, it's possible, right? It's absolutely possible for it to be true. That we're just reporting things. on it. We're reporters. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We're journalists. You know, we can get away oh. with a lot being journalists as Corbell. Oh, where's Corbell been? <laughs> yeah, I haven't, seen, I haven't seen him, you know, in a mainstream article in like 10 seconds. He must be on vacation. He must have died. Oh, <laughs> yeah, All his right. beard got caught somewhere. All right, anyway. Uh, U.S. Air Force veterans account of giant ball of plasma outside Vanderburg Air Force Base in 2012 fuels worrying worries regarding security incidents at vital U.S. facilities. So. Uh, what year was this that he saw this? 2012. Uh, in wow. 2012, yeah, I decorated the U.S. Air Force Security Forces Airmen responsible for guarding intercontinental missiles at Vanderburg Air Force Base, witnessed and reported a giant ball of plasma outside the base. The object resembled the size of the moon, quote unquote, hanging in the night sky above the expansive expanse of the Pacific Ocean. Wow. Yeah, to his baff bafflement, uh, through night vision goggles, the, uh, the UAP transformed into small spheres orbiting around a central sphere. The veteran who wishes to remain anonymous told the Russian Times that the encounter lasted for a total of 35 minutes. <sighs> More U UAPs above military nukes. bases. Especially nukes. Especially nukes. What if nukes are only okay? Now, say a human, like, like, say there are you know, the whole zoo thing, right? And that mm -hmm. you know we're, we're we're trapped here, prison planet, or not just prison planet, but we're monitored. We're not allowed to do some stuff. What if nukes was something seriously that they were even surprised that we wouldn't go because they haven't gone that route ever or something, right? Or weaponized it, or and what if that's been our elites? Um, weapon against these beings and that's why they're getting uh getting away with so much whatever they do you know it's because they have nukes well yeah uh, i mean uh, imagine if you went to the zoo and the monkeys um had somehow carved swords out of sticks or, I mean, or, or gunpowder or guns or, or yeah what if they what if the yeah. monkeys had guns i mean you'd be guns. a little concerned <laughs> we would and be like you'd oh be look, like, we have bigger guns yeah the zookeepers would be like, oh, shit, these monkeys have guns. What the hell? How would they do that kind of thing, right? Yeah. So he goes here. When looking up, I felt confused as I thought the sun was rising, which didn't make sense as it was midnight. Oh, my but, God. Yeah. But what, what was I seeing was a giant object in the night sky the size of the moon. It looked like a giant ball of plasma. It looked like those images of the sun from space. It looked, it looked like burning lava. The object was above the ocean, west of the base, but it was clearly in the sky. Yeah, I mean, that would be absolutely terrifying. What the hell? And what's this thing here? The, how the object That's appeared good. in the night sky. Oh, through night vision goggles, he said. They looked like this. Right. It was a, a bunch of orbs r rotating around a uh, sphere. Like yeah. 370 videos. But see, this is the kind of stuff. This is what we were talking about earlier. This is the kind of stuff you can you report this, or are they going to discharge you for being crazy? No, now you can report it. Now, uh, no, I'm saying now you can, but I'm oh saying yeah, now you can. Back yeah. then, I mean, this right. is you know nowadays, sure you could, um, but back then you'd be you know uh, discharged under like a mental health reason. You know, is a is a couple more now like politics and i don't want to do them i'm going to skip over them yeah go ahead skip it because we're at an hour we're almost an hour and a half oh okay so this is important uh this is not new this is on the majestic documents.com it's an Opp oppenheimer and einstein uh draft policy paper how to deal with ufos and aliens so uh it's been shared but i reread it recently and they say in here uh, they like they have reasons like they talk about like you know if they have international law or whatever or if they have their you know if they are a civilization that they've gone through the same places we have but but their their um their final 
advice is to basically i wish i can find it right here um but they basically say that we should have an agreement with them we should absorb them they say literally they say we should absorb them if they want to be here but we should not disclose their presence now, now that's that, what the agreement should say that's an interesting take so it was in 1947 uh, Oppenheimer and Albert Einstein wrote a paper because we were having issues with uh, with aliens and UFOs, um, and they go point by point. Uh, they talk about the United Nations. Where is it? Where is it? Division of celestial bodies, indivisible, uh, co sovereignty. Is this what it is? Invisible or indivisible? Co over. What does that say? Oh, I can't. Co sovereignty, in the indivisible oh. co sovereignty, giving each celestial state the right to make whatever use is most convenient to its interest independently of the others. This would create a situation of anarchy. Oh, wait, they don't like this one. A moral entity. The most feasible solution, it seems, it seems, would be this one submit an agreement providing for the peaceful absorption of a celestial race or races in such a manner that our cultural would remain intact with guarantees that their presence not be revealed. Wow. Actually, we do not believe it necessary to get to that far. It would merely be a matter of internationalizing celestial people. And, but, they, but they literally said that that would be the best. And that, maybe that's what we're seeing. Yeah. You know, maybe Federal there's an agreement with them. And that's why our federal government just will not release this information. Because there's an agreement that they finally... Uh, Enforced because <laughs> mm-hmm. then they screw over like most people that it was there's agreements with. Um, so we'll we'll share that so everyone can read it. Uh, is this I shared this uh presentation with you, it's really cool, yeah, about UFOs, abductions. You know, it's 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 a really cool presentation. This is a real image, right? Of a UFO, it was yeah. captured 1971, uh, Lago de Corte. Saucer photographed by a chance out of Costa Rica. Rica government. Yeah, always by chance, and there it is. Um, this is the the Japanese flight over Alaska, nineteen eighty six. Mm-hmm. That's the plane. That's how big the UFO was. Yeah, that's crazy to me. The scale, to scale. Uh, saucers with occupants, but what's really cool is that one that bends lights. Where is it? Yeah, that was that was super interesting, actually. Yeah, and I, I think I don't think it was was it in this. I thought it was in a different thing that you sent me, a different post. Uh, anyway, oh yeah, it is. It is. Some, what, here it is. Here it is. Yeah, I mean, like a car be uh, will be will, will be driving, and then the headlights, the lights would bend toward an object that's here. Uh, but then they yeah, have I mean, it, I think it just. And I, man, I'm like a broken record at this point. Our reality is not what I think it is, or what anyone thinks it is. Um, yeah, that is crazy. UFO, UFO bend, bend searchlight, searchlight beam. beam. There it is. Yeah. Uh, and before this, and they, they're talking about GPS because I have this problem with GPS sometimes. Not not a lot, but it still happens where the GPS doesn't know where the hell I am. It's putting my car somewhere else. So they're saying that these crafts, when they because our GPS satellites are way, way out there, right? They're in geosynchronous orbit. Mm-hmm. They're fixed, basically. So if an object comes is starting to come into Earth, it messes with our GPS uh, signals. So it's not. Yeah. It's see, this is, this is what I'm saying. I mean, if these things can bend light, which right. should, by all accounts, be impossible, um, or by all science, be impossible. Yeah, um, they're they're messing with reality. I mean, truthfully, that's that's what's going on. Yeah, if you're messing with light, I mean, at least for us, reality has to do with light. Because right? it's not like it's not like it's a mirror thing. Like they they stick up a mirror and then, but they're literally bending light, which you're bending it they're bending shouldn't it. be possible. Right, it's, especially that you know those cars, your car headlights, your headlight, you're you're beaming it forward, but it gets. Diverted off to the side, else. yeah. No, it's so totally weird. weird and shouldn't yeah. again, shouldn't be possible. So, we've talked about declassify UAP. Remember that the, the first lobbyist, it was a press release, I think it was a month mm-hmm, ago or mm-hmm, something. Mm-hmm. Um, he's active on Twitter, he follows us too. I think everyone, if you guys are 
but it's about putting your name to it. You can put a fake name, you know. They're not gonna make. We're not. They're not gonna make sure. Yeah, we don't know anything about using fake names. <laughs> no, no, we don't. <laughs> not at all. Uh, but it's cool because it will send uh, your your senators. Well, it goes to the president, vice president, and U.S. senators and representatives. It sends them a letter. Just put your name, your address. It'll send them to the ones that represent you. Um, you know, if we want this subject to come out and the ICIG and everyone to stop lying, we got to give ammunition to our representatives. You know, if they have their constituents asking them for this, that's the excuse they'll use. And, you know, they're powerful people. They have definitely. And and yeah. never forget when you send these people a message, they will do fuck all with it. <laughs> never forget. I shouldn't be so like, negative. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate your message. They'll send a candid, like yeah. a, one of those canned responses back. Yeah. I Yeah. Thank you very much for your message. Me and my team, I'm working very hard in bringing this subject. Yeah. Uh, right. Just yeah. a canned response. I do. Um, I do want to share something you shared with me, like this thing. Like, what the Whoa, hell okay. is this? So I was reading through the comments. So yeah. this, this video really, really creeps me out. Um, apparently, it's uh, what it's it's called this. Uh, shoot, this like you put it. It's a snake, not a, a real okay. snake. It's yeah. something you put in the drain to look to try and clear out. Some oh, blocking. yeah, yeah, okay. But um, it's super creepy because this person found this drainage snake coming through their shower. Oh, uh, do you think like, it's like a neighbor or something? Yeah, exactly. Like it's their downstairs neighbor, I, and they <laughs> somehow got it in the wrong. I don't know. It's still super creepy. Oh my god! Yeah, there's no. <laughs> comes up through the shower drainage, and it just. Oh. <laughs> so this thin wire comes up through their shower drain literally like comes through the the drain i don't even know what it's called what is that person i mean okay just say it's his neighbor what is he doing what is he doing like i don't know why it wiggles like that that's why it creeped me out so bad it pushes through it's it's the shower drain and it's like flying around it's super creepy like this is your like if you're sitting on the toilet this is your worst nightmare thankfully it's in the shower but even if this happened in the shower You'd be scared to death. Oh, of course. I probably to get get my. I'm not gonna say, it, but yes, I would. Uh, I would obliterate it. But yeah, I don't. I don't know that. That's the thing that kind of freaked me out. Is like I don't think like drain snakes work that way. No. Why is it flying it's around like that? It's weird. That's weird. And it pushes through the drain cover. I know, right? Something's something's <laughs> something's wrong here. It looks. I mean, a human could do that, but it still looks auto, auto, automated, or it's or it's biological. Like, yeah, I was gonna say it looks alien. Did I send you anything yeah. funny this week? Uh, we do have some funny ones. Uh, we have <laughs> this one. Did you see this guy? <laughs> I can't, I can't see what you're you're looking. Oh at. wait, he um he jumped. He jumped a fashion show, not jumped, he crashed a fashion show. I did not see this. Oh, my God. No this, one guy's, even this guy's walking down the aisle, and everyone's acting like he's a fashion person, and he gets <laughs> tackled by security. He's wearing a trash bag. And what's on his head? Is that like a... Is that a shower cap? Yeah, I think so. Hold on, I want to see. If I'm... <laughs> that's a that's definitely a visual thing. I was really hoping we had a. Um, oh, well, uh, oh, well, like a, a clip. You didn't send me anything like a comedy clip. Yeah, nothing. Huh? For one? Do you have one in mind? Oh. Intruder Fashion Week. I I do have another visual one from the NASA. Uh, just just go with NASA. Oh, that's so go ahead, funny. go ahead and play that. I'm gonna see if I can pull up. Uh, well, this, this this one's just an image, so it's uh, say we need more data. Say we need more data. <laughs> <laughs> He's pressing both. He's pressing both. Yeah, so we need more data. And you don't really just to go back to that with with NASA. What really uh, what I'm worried about 
is now they're talking about AI and machine learning. Yes, it is helpful and it might help us go through all these things. But we know it's manipulated and they can change its bias. You can put stuff in there and say, all right, so these things that the DOD makes or these things that we know are alien, just dismiss those, categorize them as something else, you know, or only tell us kind of thing. Um, you know, AI mm-hmm. can be manipulated. So I'm not really, I'm not looking forward to what, um, to what NASA is going to come up with, but never a straight answer. Never a straight answer. And they're just going to, uh, they're just going to say like we're harassing them. Oh yeah. So in the in the press conference, they didn't mention they have now they're heading, of course, this is what government does. We great at creating new bu- bureaucracies. So what they're going to do is um they put a head of okay, got it. They put a head of of a U of the uh, director of UAP or something like that. But in the press conference, they wouldn't say who uh who it was and there was and it was everyone started making fun of them saying oh you're talking about transparency you won't even tell us who this guy is so anyway they announced it the guy deleted his linkedin and they said please be respectful to him you know and then the comments under that are like well you know you're basically telling all um you're telling all scientists to not touch this subject with like a 50 foot pole because you know it's dangerous and the and the and the gov- and the people are going to harass them yeah um, man it's such it's such utter bullshit it's so frustrating to watch yeah, our government do this yeah just you know and i say this so much and i don't know if they care but you know i I say this like if you're just transparent and you let this out like people would love you guys you'll never be forgotten yeah you know if this technology is released and it revives the economy and revives the country and unites humanity and like would you, would you ever be forgotten? You'd be like the founding fathers, kind of right, thing. Right, exactly. Like, what is wrong with them? Well, yeah, I mean, they've got there's some sort of vested interest in not sharing any of this knowledge, and I, I can't imagine what it is. Well, you sent me this, Ralph. I don't even know if that's I. That was like the first funny thing I could find, and I think <laughs> it's funny. I don't know if it's gonna work or not. For All right, let's see. Let's see. Finale. Let's see. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Are you gonna put it on the stream, or are you just watching it yourself to see? It's gotta come down. Yeah, dude, Ralphie, dude, what are you doing up there? I'm having fun. I've been looking everywhere for you, man. What? What are you doing up there? I was looking everywhere for you. I'm having fun. Leave me alone. It's not safe up there. You gotta come down. Yeah, it's safe. No, it's fine. No, it's not, dude. Get down. Do you have some sort of real life analogy to uh, of somebody getting hurt on a pile of gravel that you could use to scare me down? Yeah, I, I do actually. Yeah, you do. Yeah, what is it? There was a little kid, uh-huh. little, uh, and he was on a pile of rocks, like just like that one. And then, um, <laughs> and he he got hurt. He got hurt. Yeah. Did he die? He didn't die. I mean, he just he got hurt like really bad. Yeah, you're gonna need a scarier story to scare me down from these rocks, buddy. He sprained his ankle. What? He sprained his ankle. <laughs> no, that's not true. I'm I'm having fun. You can't just say you're having fun and then just stand there and not do anything. I am having fun. It doesn't look like it. Shut up. <laughs> well, Ralphie's up to his old tricks again. He always does stuff like this because he thinks that. it upsets me. Hey, it doesn't hey, really upset no me that monologues. much. What? Please stop. I can hear you and it's grating. What are you talking to? You're just looking out into the distance, not talking. Why are you doing that? You're talking to the ground, essentially. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm having fun, buddy. Ralphie, Ralphie, have- Ralphie, where do I begin? When we first became friends in high school, I didn't really know what I thought about you. But then. No, 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 you can't voice over. <laughs> voice over is just a monologue in your head. You're just interior monologue, you're still monologue. I'm supposed to, though. What do you mean you're supposed to? I mean, it's it's right here. Oh my God. What is that? The script. The script? Yeah. But we don't do scripts. Everything we do is improvised. I mean, I know we improvised, but you said to like pretend that it was a script no, well yeah you, you improvised the line about the script i mean it was pretty lucky we found this honestly we didn't come out here with one we had to we yet. actually had to look for a piece of paper on the ground because oh we didn't God. have a yeah. reenactment even piece that. of paper we found it's this like pen layers too, layers. like not that far away is this how it ends what the the video <laughs> Dude, these guys are crazy are they are they canadian 
Uh, no, they're they're from uh, like Wisconsin or something. I don't I don't know. They're they're Dude, Americans. Stories, man. <laughs> that was great. That was layers and layers of like dimensions in a way and realities. It's a I think it's a good way to to really end the show in comedy and just with with what's what our reality is, you know. And I think I encapsulated it at least. In my yeah. Idea, you know. Because you uh, don't really know what's scripted, what's not scripted, what's written, what. <laughs> What's being and does that mean it's all not real? You know. Well, this hasn't been real. We have the whole thing scripted. Uh, this has been the <laughs> Uncovering Anomalies podcast. <laughs> that is, I want to believe Adam. I am yes. tip top, almost no longer goatee Topher. <laughs> we I gotta get a we gotta get a better better nickname for you. For me, yeah. Instead, instead of I want to believe, um, hmm. I guess anyway, like thank you. I'll, all. I'll, I'll, I'll put it to my subconscious, and maybe when I, after I, yeah, maybe it'll help me. There you go, and, and make sure you you change your name in Streamyard. That way, I can remember it. Okay. Yes. Uh, uh, okay, I'll do that. All right. Well, um, we we want to thank you all so much for listening. As always, check the show notes um, for everything we've talked about today. And yep. I want to believe Adam is going to tell us tell you where to find us on social media and stuff yeah so you guys were only on twitter you can follow us on twitter at uap the podcast you can follow tofer at tofer at all i'm also on there um i mostly just retweet and i mean I, sometimes i'll have like some thoughts i'll only share there, not on our uap account because they'll be too weird so that's at breakaway civil at breakaway civil um c-i-v-i-l um i usually tag us when we have a new episode so you guys can can see that you can follow us. I mean, you can listen to the podcast on all pat- podcasting platforms. We're on YouTube now at Uncovering Anomalies Podcast. That's the handle the, handle they gave us. So basically from episode 30 onwards, you can watch on there. And then we're also on Rumble. It's mirroring our YouTube channel. And what else? That's about. Yeah, that's 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 mostly it. So, yeah, hit us up. Follow us. Subscribe share it with the uh, with people that you know give us feedback you know we're scream it out in the streets yes yeah, scream throw it out the podcast at everyone you see yeah throw it at them <laughs> and you know maybe the maybe the real truth will just come from an individual from individuals you know instead of government because i just see more it seems more likely that governments i'm not gonna say never i don't like you use the word never but highly unlikely that's really going to disclose the truth absolutely you know? Yeah, unfortunately, well, they'll, they'll keep fighting about it. But it helps our show. I mean, as long as they're uh, they're lying and stuff, then uh, we got we got a content and the <laughs> show. Because we about bring it. the truth. Yes, the absolute truth. <laughs> or as much as we can, as much as we can do. So yeah, this, this has been what episode thirty-eight. God, are we that? Yeah, yeah. that many already. That's it. We're mature. We're on our way. Yeah. Oh man. All right, well, thank you all so much for listening, and we'll see you next week. So, so, so,
Gracias, mamá.